<laughs> Hi, Brother Roy here, Old School Bible Baptist Ministries. Yeah, we get a little different setup here today. That's right. You know, the Bible demonstrates a lot of things by parable, figure, type, illustration, example, and sample. And of course, the Lord used that all the time. He, he would show an, an earthly um, example uh, to demonstrate a spiritual or a heavenly truth. Amen. So that's what we're going to do here today. So I'm going to show you the example first. And then just like the Lord did, I'm going to give you the parable. And then we're going to go in and we're going to explain it. But just for simplicity, a couple things to just lock in your mind right now is this ice tray, this blue ice tray represents the body of flesh. That is the flesh. Let the ice cubes represent your soul. This glass right here is going to represent the Lord Jesus Christ. And the, the hot water coming out of this faucet and the water in that glass will represent the Holy Spirit. Got it? That's the flesh. That's the soul. That's Jesus. And the water is the Holy Spirit. Okay, let's do our example. So you see that these ice cubes, well, that wasn't supposed to happen. But you see how ice cubes, they're, they're joined. They're married, if you will. They are one with the ice tray. Amen? Okay, so uh, uh, they, they need to be broken loose. So what does that is the hot water. Hot water comes along, right? And then, boom, they all come out, right? So they're no longer wetted. They're no longer joined. They're no longer one with the ice tray. Amen. So that's your soul just got cut loose from your flesh. And now we're going the Holy with the Holy Spirit. We're going to put, we're going to put your soul in Christ. Amen. All right. So that is the illustration. So now <laughs> let's explain the demonstration or the illustration. Amen. Okay, go to Colossians chapter 2. See what we're talking about here. What we're talking about here is spiritual circumcision. This is the operation of God that happens when a person is born again. When a person gets saved, this is what the Holy Spirit does in their inner man. All right? Let's pray. Father, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the death, burial, and resurrection. Thank you for the blood. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you for eternal security. Help us to teach this doctrine, this truth of spiritual circumcision in the next few moments. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Okay, so speaking of the Lord Jesus Christ, in Colossians 2 and verse 9, we see, For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. So you are complete in Christ. How? How are we complete in Christ? That's what he goes on to tell us. Verse 11, in whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Circumcision means cutting around. Okay. Cutting around to circumcise, Cir circular. So that's where the word comes from. It's a cutting around. So what we did with that, with that ice tray and those ice cubes, we circumcised those cubes from the tray. And it was the hot water that did that, right? And so that's what happens uh, to your soul and your body of sins of the flesh in salvation. Because, you know, in the garden originally, um, man was created as a tripart being. He had, was a triune being because uh, he was made in the image of God. And we know that God is 
For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. And so man was created in the image of God. And so man is a living soul who has a spirit and a body. Paul said, I pray your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless under the coming of the Lord Jesus. So in the image of God, man, dust to the earth, body, breathed into him the breath of life, spirit, and man became a living soul. But when man fell, the spirit in man died. Uh, man was became spiritually dead, for God is a spirit, and they that worship God <coughs> must worship him in spirit and truth. So the spirit that was in man was the part of man that was joined to God, that was God conscious and supposed to rule the soul and the body. But when man died spiritually, the soul then began to be ruled by the flesh. Uh, the Bible talks about uh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. So now, now you have a sinful soul connected to a very sinful flesh. And as we saw in the demonstration of the cube and the tray, they were joined. The soul and the flesh were joined or married as one. That's why you see in the Old Testament, in this prohibition of what God said is clean and unclean, that is, if, if anyone was to touch with their flesh, that which was unclean, that their soul was defiled because the soul and the flesh were one. So, based on the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, now the Holy Spirit can perform an operation because why? Because sin has been taken out of the way. Look with me, if you will. In Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5, 30 through 32. The Bible says that now, now, after having been spiritually circumcised, we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. And he says, look, he says, this is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Now, go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. You'll get a little more explanation on that. It says, the Bible says that we've been joined and made bone of his bones, flesh of his flesh, We've been made one with Jesus Christ through his death, burial, and resurrection through this operation of God. And how was that possible? Okay, well, look with me in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and look at verse 17. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. See, you were made one one spirit with Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit came in, brought your dead spirit back to life, and you were made one spirit with Jesus Christ. Well, how was that possible? How could I, how could I become one? How could I marry Jesus Christ if I, was al if I was already, my soul was already married to the flesh? How could I marry another? Look with me in Romans chapter 7, verse 4. Look at 7 4. This is good. Wherefore, my brethren, ye are also become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that ye should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead. Amen. So it says, you were made dead to the law by the body of Christ that you should be married to another. So, what does that mean? All right, all right. Look at Romans chapter 6. One page back. Verse 6. Knowing this, 
that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. That's what he was just talking about, that in the, in the Christ's body on the cross, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. In the life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. You, when, when Jesus Christ hung there on the cross, you were crucified with him. This body of sins of the flesh was put to death. It's dead. And the Bible says, what? Now that this that that, that is dead, that you are free to marry another, even him who rose from the dead. So your soul is set free from the body of sins of the flesh because it was crucified and died on the cross of Calvary and you marry, you become one with another, even him who rose from the dead. You are, you become one with Jesus Christ. Remember that we put the ice cube in to Jesus Christ. Amen. And look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Explains it perfectly. First Corinthians chapter 12. Look at, look at verse 12 and 13. For as the body, body of Christ, for as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so is Christ. Verse 13. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. Amen. Whether we be Jews or Greeks, whether we bond or free, we've all been made to drink into one spirit. Amen. And we read, we read over there in first Corinthians that he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. So that's what happens. Your soul is placed in Christ and he that joined to the Lord becomes one spirit. You become married to Jesus Christ. You become one with him. You are now bone of his bone. You are flesh of his flesh. See, and that's, we go right back to Romans 6, and you can see that's what he's talking about. Look at Romans 6, verse 3. Know ye not that as many of us as were baptized into Christ were baptized unto his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism. Amen. That the, the body of sin has been destroyed. It's put to death. You have been divorced from that. You have then been made one with Jesus Christ by the Holy Spirit, sealed under the day of redemption. Ephesians, that's why Ephesians says that you're already seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus because you're in him and he sits at the right hand of the Father and he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. You already are one third of the way to heaven just waiting for your body and soul to catch up because you are joined spiritually to Jesus Christ. That's what spiritual circumcision did for you. And there's no way to undo that and to take you out of Christ. And I'll use this as a perfect example. Remember that ice cube we dropped in there? Take it out. Take it out. I mean, exactly. The exact water that was in that ice cube became one with the water that was in this cup and it's absolutely impossible to separate the water that was in that ice cube from the water that was in this cup ever again, ever again. They have been made one for, for all eternity. And he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. And that spirit is the Holy Spirit. And that is his spirit. And he is seated at the right hand of the Father. And spiritually, so are you. That is irreversible. You can never, never, never go back in and get that ice cube out of there. And you could never, 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 ever, ever go back in 
and remove yourself from Christ. That is the beauty of the operation of God, spiritual circumcision. I hope that was a blessing to you. I know that's been one of the greatest blessings of my life is to know that no matter what, no matter what happened in this stinking old dead flesh that I still carry around, no matter what happens in that stinking dead flesh, it cannot affect my position in Jesus Christ. Ha. Huh. That's why <laughs> that's why it's called eternal security. Amen. Ain't no ifs, ands, buts about it. We got eternal life when he placed us in him. And it's, heaven is no longer a destination. It's a destiny. You're already one third of the way there. Don't ever let the devil try to get your eyes off the finished work of Jesus Christ and back on your flesh and back up on, on what you're doing because none of us measure up. None of us measure up. Uh, the, this flesh can, there's a part of you that's, that's the new man in Christ that can do no wrong, but there's a part of you that you still carry around. And that's a stinking dead flesh and it can do no right and it never will until that day when we get our new bodies that are just like his glorious body and we will be once and forever delivered from the very presence of sin. Hallelujah. And we see him. We shall be like him and we shall know even as we're known. Oh, glory to God. But he said that the Holy Spirit has been given us as an earnest, as a down payment on that future complete salvation. Amen. So our souls saved, our spirits saved, and hallelujah, uh, the spirit's already in heaven, and we're going to get a brand new body when he comes and gets us. Amen. What a glorious Savior. What a glorious salvation. Amen. And, and, and how cool it is to dig in a little bit deeper. Just go a little deeper and see the details. That's why faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. When you get in, when you, when you believe the book and you know the book, these truths open up to you and they give you security. They give you confidence. Amen. God bless you. You know I love you and we'll see you in the next one.